Welcome, welcome. I'm, I'm Pastor Chris from the Presbyterian Church of Marion in Marion Center, Pennsylvania. And I welcome you to our YouTube worship playlist for May 24th, 2020. Now, I do have a couple of announcements. Our session, that's our elders, has a working task group to see what all needs to be done to reopen our building, particularly when we might consider having worship at our location. And I know some are chomping at the bit for this to happen. Others have let me know that they are not going to be back to the county situation turns green. I, I get that. We are trying to figure out also how we might keep our online ministry going, as many of you that have been watching these videos have let it be known that you appreciate what is being done. No decisions have been made, but I would ask you that you would keep our elders in prayer as they see what it might take to be moving forward and what it might even look like. As I said from the beginning, let us be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Session is going to meet on Tuesday night to pray and discuss. And I also need to mention this a little bit more often, but we or I have absolutely no control over what commercials YouTube may put up when you're watching this playlist. But what you will find is that each commercial, if it's long enough, usually pops up a little option on the screen that after a little while you can click on it and you can exit the commercial. And I would encourage you to take advantage of that fact if the need should arise. But we, again, are just very grateful to God that we are able to do these videos for absolutely free, no cost to us. That is a blessing. But again, I just want to welcome you. This is Memorial Day weekend. Read a little bit about what Memorial Day is about. As the Civil War neared its end, thousands of Union soldiers held as prisoners of war were headed into a series of, of hastily assembled camps in Charleston, South Carolina. And conditions at one camp, a former racetrack near the city citadel, were so bad that 250 prisoners died was either from disease or exposure, and they were buried in a mass grave behind the grandstand. Anyway, three weeks after the Confederates' surrender, an unusual procession entered the former camp. On May 1st, 1865, more than 1,000 recently freed slaves, uh, accompanied by a regiment of the U.S. colored troops, and with a handful of white people from Charleston, they gathered in the camp to concentrate a new proper burial site for the Union dead. When the group gathered, they sang hymns. They did Bible readings. They distributed flowers all around the cemetery, which they dedicated to the martyrs of the race course. In May 1868, General John Logan, the commander-in-chief of the Union veterans group known as the Grand Army of the Republic, issued a decree that May 30th should become a nationwide day in commemoration of the more than 620,000 soldiers killed in the Civil War. Can you imagine that? 620,000. On Decoration Day, as it was dubbed, Americans should lay flowers and dedicate the graves and decorate the graves of the war dead whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. And according to legend, Logan chose May 30th because it was a rare day that didn't fall on an anniversary of a Civil War battle. Although some historians really believe that he chose May 30th because that's when he knew many, many flowers would be in bloom. Although the term Memorial Day was used in the beginning for almost 100 years, it was officially known as Decoration Day. And eventually it got changed by federal law. The Uniform Holiday Act of 1968 finally went into effect and Memorial Day moved its traditional observance from May 30th, regardless of the day of the week, to a set day. It's the last Monday in May. I didn't realize that, but Memorial Day didn't become an official federal holiday until 1971. So many Americans honor Memorial Day by visiting cemeteries or memorials holding family gatherings, participating in parades. While most of these events this year have been canceled, let us not forget the meaning of this day. 
let us not forget so many brave people before us gave their lives in defense of what they felt was right. And I know even in that there are winners and losers, but let us not forget to honor those who fought for you and me. We are here to worship. Allow me to open us up with a word of prayer. Living and faithful spirit in, in God whom we live and move and have our being, the God who's been made known to us in Jesus Christ, bless us in this time we are about to spend together. Remove from us, from our minds, from our hearts, anything that might just be an impediment to worshiping. Remove from us anything from us that might be decreasing our joy. Increase within us a holy longing for closeness to which we can open our lives to a fuller delight in you. So may our hymns, our songs, our prayers, our scriptures, our hearing of the scriptures be an exercise in the holiness that you would want us to embody. By you, with you, and for you, may our lives publish your praise. And we pray these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So in my, my um, seclusion time, I've been listening to a lot of music. Sometimes I just follow suggestions around on YouTube, and it can lead you in some interesting directions. The following video I'm about to show you is one that took my breath away a couple of weeks ago. It was filmed in a Mennonite worship service in the state of Indiana. And the only thing I ask is that you just soak this in and allow the following offering to bring you closer to Christ. Because we are not alone. 